Hello, today for review I've got Shenlinx Up4 in their flagship Bluetooth receiver and uh, as you probably know it's uh, closest competitor or closest rival to FIO BTR5 that I also reviewed recently. They have a lot of similar things in the schematics, both use Qualcomm uh, 8675, uh, if I remember right, that index as uh, Bluetooth chip uh, and both support a uh, wide variety of uh, Bluetooth codecs, uh, including high resolution ones, uh, and uh, both use dual uh, ES. Uh, 9218 as digital tonal converters featuring uh, pretty similar features uh, both have single-ended and balanced output but uh, of course there are a lot of different uh, ideas in the design and in all other stuff price is also different uh, up for is uh, more affordable its price just $100, at least at Hi-Fi Go shop, I will add a link to the description. But uh, enough talks, let's, let's have a closer look now. Bit different approach to the packaging, mm, fancier than FIO and uh, bigger than FIO. On the back side, uh, basic specifications, as you can see, HWA LDAC, APTX and APTX HD, APTX low latency, AAC and subband codec. So, same set as FIO, but with added HWA. Inside of the box we'll have receiver itself. Let's pull more. And here will have accessories. So, USB-C cable, a bit better than Fios and, uh, and a half case with a clip. So, same idea, but as you can see, uh, case is a bit simpler than Fio, but I will show it a bit later. And a quick start guide with English instructions. So, all all features and all stuff is covered here so as you can see accessory set is is uh, okay probably nothing fancy but all that you will need with it you will have in terms of design it's definitely uh, the gadget that is made by shenling as you can see signature design rounded curves rounded glass on the front and on the back panel and actually here is its closest rival as you can see Fio BTR5 is a bit longer, but at the same time a bit narrower, so it's a matter of preferences, which form factor do you prefer. And so here is the difference with uh, cases, so Fio has spring clip, here it is, while Shenling uses regular plastic, so it's a bit cheaper solution. Anyway, looks stylish, really attractive uh, and another difference, it doesn't have any screen, so everything is done via LED indicator. So turn it on, turn it on indicator shows the status, it shows battery, it shows selected Bluetooth codec, it shows gain actually by, by clicking it shows the color of the gain, double click, changing, changing the gain. So, not 100% uh, convenient, but anyway, you can learn basic stuff. So, here it is in connected mode. Also, it supports, of course, NFC for quick pairing. So, on the bottom, there is USB uh, connector for charge and use it as digital to analog converter. Speaking about the charge, it gives about 8 hours from balanced output and about 12-13 hours from single-ended output, at least in my tests. On the upper side here is regular headphone out and balanced out and mode button toggle. Uh, it's uh, 
USB and Bluetooth mode and the microphone. I'm not sure is it does it support uh, uh, tall controls on the headphones or not. Few support that about Shenlink. I'm not sure I don't have any headphones with tall controls right now to test and English version of Shenlink uh, site uh, doesn't have BTR for yet. Oh, sorry, up for yet, so I'm not sure about its complete feature set. What else I can say? Really good connection quality and uh, similar to the BTR5, so really long range and pretty stable connection. Works okay as a digital tonal converter. And uh, for the controls, you have you'll have to use this clicking wheel, so rotating will change the volume. Single click it's play pause, double click it's uh, next track, triple click is previous track, not really intuitive solution, but anyway it's working. For here for track navigation you have to long press the volume buttons. Also not 100% efficient way of doing the stuff. Anyway, it's it's working, it connects really fast and it's doing the stuff uh, pretty nicely. So in terms of connectivity, in terms of codex, in terms of everything, it works uh, okay. Built-in microphone is uh, pretty good, but uh, noise cancellation isn't superb. So in the noisy environment, you'll have to move the microphone closer to your face or in quiet environment, it will be okay anyway. And of course about the sound, so we need some in-ear monitors, this time I will use Meze Rise Solo, it's not the model that I used for critical listening, because they, uh, they are a bit colored, but colored in a fun way, so I did a review, won't, uh, won't go deep describing their sound. So for critical listening I'm using high-end models like Noble Khan, Unique Melody Mason third version and so on. But this model looks really stylish, so I decided to put them on the table. And we need something as a source and I think it would be really logical to use Shenling's own dub. As you can see actually they have really similar design, so I think it's a good thing for company to have some uh, consistent visual style. And uh, I will also review them six, so if you're interested in reviews, please follow the link in the description. So in terms of sound, it offers a bit different signature compared to BTR3, it's more on the former waiter and baser side. Probably in frequency response for it will be totally flat, but uh, it definitely put additional weight into low frequencies and into mids and it has a bit less accented treble so I will probably a bit about that later. So in terms of bass it's, uh, it's it goes pretty deep but uh, unfortunately the bass depth suffers from uh, lossless from lossy com compression of a Bluetooth codex, so depth is normal, but not the maximum one. But it's it's not the issue with this Shenlink, it's just an issue with every single receiver. So deepest layers of bass is present, but they are simplified. But starting from uh, mid bass, uh, low frequencies are really nice, with good resolution, with a bit of additional weight to add a bit more punch, to add a bit more mass and uh, to make sound more, probably more authoritative or I don't know what a proper word to use here. Resolution is normal as well as texturing, so it's pretty universal low frequencies. Uh, especially if you don't like uh, natural and uh, totally uncolored bass. It's good with uh, acoustic instruments because it's adding a more body and more weight and it's good with synthesized low frequencies because additional weight is also a nice thing there. And then, as an example, I've got uh, Deep Purple made in Japan, uh, it's a remastered version few years ago they released remastered version and it's it's a perfect live uh, record, live album, one of the greatest in the history of rock, but you know it even without me. 
and I could select every single track, uh, but I decided to take Smoke on the Water, you probably know why, because this moment when bass uh, line starts, it's sounding really out of this world, and this uh, tiny receiver definitely managed to, uh, to play it in a nice way. And uh, mids are also a bit with added weight, so it's not going deep into the micro detailization. So it's, it's sacrificing a bit of micro contrast uh, for sake of uh, additional weight, for sake of additional emotions. It's highlighting emotions a little bit, so it's not probably audiophilic device, totally natural and monitoring, just a bit of highlighted emotions and a bit of added weight. And so engaging sound signature. Imaginary stage is uh, a bit below average in width and in depth in wireless mode and above average uh, in the wired mode, so in the USB mode. So all that remarks that I'm making about Bluetooth connectivity, please remember that uh, there is also an option to use it as a USB digital to analog converter and in this case all that issues will be gone. It's working as digital to analog converter too. And uh, as an example for the for the mid frequencies I've got Led Zeppelin actually let's do it classical rock evening today it's Gallows Paul also remastered version so evening of remasters of classical rock and you know this track definitely too it starts with guitars uh, and emotional vocal as usual and when it comes to Robert Plant and uh, it requires uh, nice resolution but also highlighted emotion it, it gives nice resolution and highlighted emotions also present here so it's sounding even a bit more emotional than it is in the real life and treble actually treble here is reduced a little bit probably also not in terms of frequency response but it just moved um, to the it moved behind the low frequencies and mids, or maybe mids and lows are moved forward the treble, but actually it's a version for those who don't like uh, accented treble or who don't like sharp sound. In terms of quality, actually treble is pretty good. Nice realistic attacks and decays, normal resolution. Of course, extension is not great, but it's also a matter of Bluetooth compression because Usually Bluetooth codex cutting uh, higher treble and lower bass uh, psychoacoustics. They decided that it's not it's not that important. So normal resolution and normal extension, but of course not as good as it could be if it was a wire, wired device. When you connect it uh, as USB digital tone converter, extension improves, but still treble stays behind the mids a little bit. It's enough uh, treble to play this um, uh, cymbals, percussion and so on, but I'm liking a bit of uh, overtone saturation, I like it a bit more, but it's more a matter of subjective preferences anyway. And as an example, sorry not folders, not, but playlist and uh, another classical rock and another remaster, it's Pink Floyd, set the controls for the heart of the sun and it starts with uh, percussion, it starts with all that symbols and actually usually Bluetooth receivers fail with this track because all that symbols sounding too, uh, too flat and uh, they are almost undistinguishable from one from each other and this receiver managed to play them not perfectly but uh, nicely. So. What else I can say? In terms of power, I don't remember spe exact specs. Are they in the manual? From single-ended output, if I remember right, it's about uh, 90 milliwatts. Uh, actually, you can see it's uh, different uh, indicator values and what it means. So no technical specifications here. If I will remember, I will add them there, but something about 90 milliwatts for 32 ohms load in single-ended mode and 
probably 180 in uh, in uh, balanced uh, and it that means that it will drive without any problem without problems almost any single in ear monitors and uh, many of full size headphones it will drive too because it's especially from the balanced output because it delivers a decent amount of power and as for background noise it's uh, slight but audible audible from on the low gain and on the high gain it will be more noticeable so don't use the high gain with the super sensitive in ear monitors but for me it's noise is on the acceptable level but also it's a matter of subjective preferences of course but i need to warn that uh, it's audible not high but still present in terms of compressions uh, just the one model that i've got that is can be compared and actually they are closest rivals i will tell about sound only now because there are a lot of uh, difference in terms of features in terms of uh, user experience and so on i will create a separate video about that probably a bit later so just in terms of pure sound so btr5 is a bit more power powerful and it's more natural and it's more resolving so it's more so let's call it more audiophilic tuning more monitoring more natural with a bit more extension while this one with more weight on mids and lows and uh, a bit less power but still enough so you know it's a matter of your preferences first of all so if you need something totally uncolored and natural it will be your choice if you like more colored signature or if you if you actually heard the shenling's dubs probably you can get an idea of the their lows and mids representation and they repeat it in their receiver so you will have their signature sound and i think it's also a good thing because shenling is very consistent they are creating uh, they using similar design, similar sound, and fans of this brand know what they will receive with almost every single new device. So it was Shenling Up 4, really good uh, uh, high-end receiver. Probably we seen the born of the new brand, actually not brand, the new type of the devices, high-end receivers. Of course, there is also Ratson ES100, but I tested only briefly and. I, for me, it's treble sounding a bit more synthetic comparing with both these devices. So it's also adding a bit more weight on mids and lows, but in terms of treble, I can say that Shenlink is better, but it's not the result of direct AB compression, just by memory compression. So please take it with a grain of salt. It was Shenlink up 4. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.